Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trusting is something that we do naturally. That may be hard for some of you to accept because I know that sometimes when we're trying to trust people, it's not as easy. But we do trust more frequently and freely than we admit. Sometimes we say people need to earn our trust. They have to prove themselves to us that they are worthy, trustworthy. But how often, you've done it this morning, I'm not sure how many times, but how often do we go to the chair and sit down? Without a second glance, and in your house or while visiting someone, we go to the hospital, we sit in the waiting room, we sit in a room with someone next to their bed. There we go. We take a seat. And we don't think for a second that it will collapse beneath us. We trust that it is a chair and therefore it will do what we expect to hold our weight. And another thing that I've observed is the birds. Regardless of their size, whether it's an eagle or a little sparrow, they perch at the top of a tree. They don't seem to worry whether or not that tree is going to hold them. They trust it will. For those of you who go on the internet, you may be familiar with Pinterest. And that's a place that I frequent a lot. I search for Bible verses and little inspirational sayings, and sometimes I write them down to reflect on them. And on this topic of trust, an anonymous writer says, a bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking, because our trust is not on the branch. It's on its own wings. And another person encourages, when, he, when God pushes you to the edge, trust him fully. Either he will catch you when you fall, or he will teach you how to fly. We can trust God with all of our hearts. Because he will always be there for us. He's never late. He's never too busy. He wants us to trust him. And then he will show us marvelous things. We often quote Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Do you believe that with all your heart? Do you trust him? He says plans to prosper you, not to harm you. All the bad stuff in our lives, God didn't put it on us. I believe that when things happen, even if they are difficult, that in time God can turn it around for good. Not that a young person <clears throat> dying or something, someone getting sick or being used and abused is a good thing. But God can certainly use you to help others because of the experience that you've had. I never thought that God could use a broken neck for good. That was a serious, serious situation. 
But when I was called to the bedside of a 17-year-old who also had a broken neck, I knew God could help me help someone else. I never thought losing someone could be used for good. But when I was having my wedding dress made, the seamstress had recently lost a loved one, and she broke down and talked to me. I knew God could take that bed and use it for good. And I'm sure you can recall such examples in your own lives as well. Sometimes we focus too much on the negative. But the good news is that God doesn't plan to harm us, but when we face difficulties, we have to trust him that he will come through. He won't collapse beneath our load of cares. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Well, sometimes trusting don't come natural. Especially when you experience people letting you down or betraying you. But God is not like people. God is faithful. God delivers. He rescues and he restores. How often do we say to someone, when God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. I hope we believe it when we encourage others. So we pray. We encourage others to pray. We tell others we will pray for them. Yet there are times we don't even have words. All we have are tears. Well, he knows. He understands the silence. He can interpret the tears. I admit there are times that I could do nothing else but cry and utter, Dear Lord, read my heart. Jesus says in Matthew 6 and 26, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? This talks about provision. But it also tells us that God, our Heavenly Father, knows our needs. Even before we do. We sang it this morning, my Father knows what I need. He will come through. He is trustworthy. 2 Samuel 22 and 31 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Are you trusting God with your life this morning? With your family? Are you leaning on him? To carry you through? Do you trust God with your heart? Have you given your heart to Him? It's not so easy just to stand by and let Him provide, is it? But that's what the trusting is. Trusting is in the waiting. If you have hurts this morning, he can restore you. 
If you're tired and weary, He can refresh you. Reach out to Him. He already knows what you're going through, what you're concerned for, who you are praying for. Trust Him fully. Like the reading that someone anonymously wrote. Either He will catch you when you fall or teach you how to fly. If you don't know Him in a personal way, then I invite you to call on His name, to ask Him to save you, to cleanse you and to make you whole. He is the all-sufficient one. You can lean on Him, trust Him to be faithful and to meet your needs this morning. Shall we bear with prayer? Lord, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you because you remind us, Lord, to place all our trust in you. And Lord, that we may think we know a lot, but we can't lean on our own understanding. But we need to lean on you. And Lord, sometimes situations may be so difficult that we don't even know what way to turn. But Lord, I pray that you will help us to remember that no matter how difficult it is, whatever the situation may be, if we're even going to try something new, we need to step out. And if we fall, you will catch us. Or you will teach us how to fly. And Father, I pray that in our relationship with you, Lord, that you would teach us. That you will continue to catch us when we stumble. And I pray, Lord, that you will speak to the hearts of those who don't know you in a personal way this morning. I pray, Lord, that they would understand <coughs> the need to make things right with you. That we don't know how long we have in this life. We know so many people who die way too young. They die unexpectedly. And Lord, I pray that people would realize that they need you in their lives. I pray, Father, this morning that as we enter into this time of reflection, that, Lord, you would speak to our hearts. Move us, Lord. I pray that you would move among your people. And I pray, Lord, that for this revival that many of us keep praying for, Lord, that we would realize we need to start within ourselves. This revival needs to start within us. And once it starts in us, Lord, you will show us how it could move from person to person. Father, I pray that you will continue to be with us this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.